Welcome, in today's video you're going to see how I paint fruit. My latest painting shows a kind of still life with plums. Although there is quite a bit of life, I still call it a still life. This video gives you an idea how I paint fruit. Follow me in this painting which steps I use to achieve a realistic result. I jump into the video where I apply the underpainting in acrylic. In terms of drawing, I keep it limited and only show the most important lines. Without using much color, I reproduce the global tones of the plum. Let's say how dark and how light certain parts of the subject should be. The colors I use are black, ultramarine blue, cadmium red and titanium white. The lightest parts are still a mix of the basic colors I currently use. At this stage you don't have to use your best brush yet. The spontaneous nature of a weathered brush also has its charm. I'm always aware that during the underpainting I stay within the lines of the drawing as much as possible. This way you keep the structure of your painting as intact as possible. Because the acrylic dries so quickly you can apply the next layer very quickly. This is why I always do my underpainting in acrylic and never in oil. I try to keep the colors fairly dirty and therefore do not use so-called power colors at this stage of the painting. The plum is now becoming a three-dimensional shape. On to the next one. The same painting technique applies here as with the first piece of fruit. It is important that you do not always place the fruit in the same direction for the composition. Otherwise the spontaneous character of the composition disappears. Now that the rest of the underpainting is ready and the background has already been painted in oil, it is time to apply the first layer in oil paint. 
I now use slightly more powerful and saturated colors for this than with the underpainting. Since the background is already finished in oil paint, I have to be extremely careful when painting the fruit. Here I can't make mistakes with the shape of the plum. Gradually the fruit gets more details such as small color nuances, spots and dots. The still life is backlit from above. Of course I have to take this into account with every piece of fruit I paint. This keeps consistency within the painting. From now on every part of the painting has been given a coat of oil paint. Time to apply the finishing coat. With this last layer I am going to accentuate the highlights and deepen the shadows with the so called glazing technique. This is a technique in which you apply a transparent layer. You can also make any color corrections during this final layer. As you can see my hand rests on a wooden stick so that I don't touch the wet oil paint. That would be a waste. Extra shadows create a depth effect. For example certain elements of your still life jump forward and other parts recede.
no fruit without some dew drops. These drops make the painting even more realistic and fresher. When you paint these drops, it is important to paint transparently so that the underlying surface is still visible. Only then you will get a stunning effect. These dew drops catch light, so don't forget to paint a catch light in each drop. Now finish the rest of my still life and then my painting with fruit is ready. Here's the end result and I'm pretty happy with it. The title of this painting will be Le Cirque des Animaux, which is French for the Animal Circus. Soon this painting of plums will find its way to a new home with one of my clients or perhaps a new art collector. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like the video. If you would like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel. That's it for now, see you in the next one.